Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Fellow citizens, following the sequence of events, Uganda seems to be at political crossroads. I'm not a servant of anybody. Madam, I know the law. As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Besuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation, as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m. in the morning. Be there. Don't miss the live discussion on the Alternative Uganda, Digitalk TV Facebook pages, and the Alternative Uganda YouTube channel. You have got to get up pretty early to go do something. We are the Alternative Dig Talk. With our mobile studios, we are redefining TV presentation just as technology is setting the pace. We are blending our approach with fresh, perspectively designed breakfast show, The Mighty Drive, informative and entertainment show, exclusive and live interviews. Well, President Museveni, what they use in the Mulaba Pimaka Unga Kilo Billy, that's over a career. Nini Wabaria Kilo Tan. We are Nemokulis, Iguanga Nebri Mundekera. Jagara Kueva Zad, the alternative digi talk. It was the Kanoka Mighty Drive. Era Nava to Uliza, Bona, Abali Kumikutu, Jagara Basaba Mugendoma, so no Uliza. All given to you, just a click away on your phone, tablet, laptop, and smart TVs. As we are streaming live on our social media platforms, on the road and on the go. We are the Alternative Dig Talk. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Apologies for just that uh, a second of interruption. Of course, you know we are in the age of technology and sometimes things we may not understand everything, so sometimes here and there, hiccups like those are inevitable. But by and large, I welcome you again. 
My name again is Roger Suryawe and uh, you're watching the Dig Talk TV and the Mighty Drive show at the, uh, at the, the day. Today is 25th of August of the year of the Lord 2022 again. I want to remind you that the year is coming to an end. If you have a resolution set for this year, I'm asking that you revise them and check and make sure that at least you appreciate what you have accomplished this year. And even for that, that has not happened. Things don't always go in the direction that you want. So I hope that you tap on your back and appreciate yourself for what you have done so far, but also strive to do better in future. So today, like I said, uh, you watching The Mighty Drive, and uh, I was thanking you before for you for keeping it the dig talk. It is important that every one of us is informed and we make informed decisions if we are informed. And that is why you wake up every single day, come here and give you the information from wherever it is coming from. And most of the times, host gentlemen and ladies here, those we consider experts in particular fields, to give us the ideas, to, tell, to talk to us about some of the issues that are happening in the country. Some may be political, mostly by and large, because you understand, as the saying goes, man is naturally a political animal, so everything that does happen is literally as a, as a, as, as a cause of politics, if it, be it... You know, there's a lot of us who say, I don't like politics. Politics is a dirty game. I don't really enjoy politics at that. But let me tell you, even the food you eat on your plate is actually as far as our politics allows. And now some people, obviously, I'm not going to go into the breakdown of all that, but you need to understand that politics literally drives everything. So most of the discussions are usually around governance and mostly about young people. And what we can do, we are the majority of stakeholders in this country, if not this world, and so it's important what we put on the table, or but to put something on the table, we need to be informed, and that is why the alternative is here this day. And so uh, before we go into the discussion of this day, I want to, go to take you through what has happened in areas where you have not been. That is why we are here, to go there and make sure that we get the information that you need, but also get it in real time. Now, before I get to that, I have a special, it's a special day for a particular individual, Melissa Ndamira. Melissa and Amira, a very happy birthday, that lady that you see on your screen. It is her birthday this day. Her birthday is so that we also appreciate God for the fact he has brought her. And uh, she's, she's a very intelligent young lady at that. And so I will wish you us, me, particularly Rogers to Yahweh, and also Dig Talk as a whole, and particularly Eddie Gamothi Karahanga, we all wish you a very, very happy birthday this day. Whatever the age you have made, I hope that God uh, makes your dreams come true at the time that you need them. Now, moving forward, uh, uh, we can leave Ndamira to celebrate that. We shall look at the cake, obviously. Those who can join you, feel free. You can inbox me. <laughs> Let's go into the details of what happened. Where are you not? First off, DRC declares resurgence of Ebola. Now, Ebola is a disease that has happened quite, for quite some time in this country, and it is believed to be caused by some... Uh, for, uh, it comes from animals. They say it is sometimes it comes from pigs, but sometimes also from bats. But w we don't know exactly is the cause of Ebola. But now there has been an alert that it is resurging in Congo after a, 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 a 46 year old woman died of Ebola in North Kivu, which is in the DRC. Now the, I'm uh, telling you that because particularly districts of Uganda that are, 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 are on the border of Congo. They said the Minister of Health cited about 21 of them saying they are at the risk of getting the Ebola. Now, among those are Kasesen, Toroko, Kanungo, Bondivujo, Chisoro, Zombo, among others, really. But most of those that are at the border are bordering Congo and those are districts that are neighbor, the districts that are neighboring Congo. And so it is a call to every one of you who are out there to make sure that you look out for the symptoms of, of, of Ebola outbreak. In case you come in contact with someone who has Ebola, the symptoms are usually high temperature, joint and muscle pain, headache, sore throat, among a lot of others. So you look out for those, make sure you don't come in contact with those. It is a, a disease that is very deadly at that, a virus that is very deadly. We have had about four outbreaks of Ebola in Uganda, which was in 2000, 2004, 2017, and also 2018. But the deadliest was in 2004, where we had about 425 cases, and 224 of those were deaths registered dead because of Ebola. Now that means literally more than half of the uh, cases who actually died of Ebola. And so it is very deadly. We cannot afford to go back into another lockdown because of issues such as this. And so it is a caution and a call that every one of you keeps uh, alert, make sure that you, 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 you know where you, you, you go through. You, you understand obviously the Minister of Health is working so hard to make sure that it gazettes areas 
it has a put a, a, a border point, security on the border, to make sure that it checks all people that are entering and leaving Uganda, but also to make sure that they vet people and make sure that they don't have uh, Ebola moving into one of these countries. So the goal is for every one of us Ugandans that as you go around, I understand some of us, it might be homes, at, at home districts that are, are at risk, but it's important to be cautious and make sure that your family is safe. And so let's look out for the uh, causes, for the, I mean for the symptoms, to make sure that if one of us has it, they don't spread to the others. It has been a problem, and I think uh, for the last outbreak in the DRC, about, I think, around 200,000 uh, people, uh, students at that, young people, were not in school because of Ebola, because of fear of the outbreak of Ebola and spread. So we cannot afford to go back to that. We cannot have, uh, uh, certainly afford to go back to lockdown because of Ebola, especially given what we have come through from the, uh, the COVID-19 that has ravaged all uh, the whole world. So let's uh, be cautious, look out for the symptoms, make sure your family is safe, and uh, if you see symptoms, please reach out for the healthcare. Uh, uh, go to the hospital, tell them, check up, and make sure that you, uh, you don't have. It's possible to mix up with maybe the, the malaria, the common diseases, but it's also possible that you can get it. So whenever you have the symptoms, please make sure to reach out to the health facilities to ascertain whether you do have it or not. Now, moving forward, the fighting resumes in northern Eth Ethiopia after five months of atrocity. Now, this outbreak has happened, uh, the war has happened in the Tigray region of, of Ethiopia. Now, as you can see on the screen, this outbreak happened in November of 2020. Now, they had been fighting for over about, I think, for about 21 months, but they came to a truce, to a common agreement in, two th in, in March of 2022 this year and said they need to cease fire because a lot of people are dying, really. And, and you understand where there's a, a, a situation such as that, there's a lot of problems. Students don't go to school. There's increased poverty. There's food shortages. There's famine. People really die. There's always mass killings and mass violations like uh, uh, molestation and, and, and rape. And, and, you know, lawlessness, obviously, those are some of the symptoms of lawlessness. And so this, this gentleman had come to a truce. Uh, the TPLF, which is uh, Tigre People's Liberation Front, the one that is more like the... Uh, the ones that are occupying the Tigray regions, they are those gentlemen, the, uh, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, and the Ethiopian government led by the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. And so they have I had come to a truce to say that they need to find a common ground and see how they can uh, serve for the good of the people. Now, on, on the when the wee mornings of the Wednesday around 5 a.m. Tigray time, or, uh, the Ethiopia time, they are the, the TPL, of which is the Tigray People's Liberation Front, said, I reported a large-scale offensive that was launched against the oppositions in the southern front, which meant that the government actually did the first attack. They violated the truce first by striking the southern regions, the positions of the Tigri, of the TPLF. Now, there has been, obviously, every one of these sides has blamed the other for not respecting the truce and the position that, and the agreement that they came to. Every one of them saying, you are the first to attack, you are the first to attack. And obviously, at the end of the day, where there are no arguments, it means it's going to escalate, and if it escalates, the war, of course, happens again. Now, the spokesperson for the TPLF, Getachu Reda, uh, was uh, reported saying that, uh, that it was the, uh, Thai, uh, the Ethiopian government that hit, hit stri striked first. Striked, I think that's the right English, yes. And so they are saying, obviously, if they strike their position, they have to strike back for protection. Now, Tigray is an area is a big area really in the northern uh, country of, of Ethiopia. But this uh, region is home to about 6 million people. Now, if you understand, it means that those people, the 6 million people, if you remember very well the, for the last outbreak, the war that was happening, the, 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 the TPLF literally said, every one of every one person who is a resident of this region needs to get up. We saw child uh, soldiers. They said uh, they gave guns to almost every one of those people and so said they need to fight for their region. And so it means at the end of the day that a lot of people are going to be affected at that. And, and, and that's not good really, especially in the century that we are attending. The, now, the, the problem that has happened and has come with the outbreak of the war is that the basic services are not in the Tigray region. The people in the Tigray have no electricity, there's no communication, there's no banking, basic services, food infrastructures, they, they are not really working very well. And so that means the, the, the people of lives 
the lives of the people in the Taigu region are at risk. Now, the TPLF says that basic services must be restored in Taigu's 6 million people uh, population before dialogue can begin. They are trying to, to, to make sure that they mediate and see how to resolve that issue because at the end of the day, the lives of people are more important than who is actually leading them. Whether they stay under the Abiy's government of Ethiopia as a whole, or they succeed and make a Tigray country all, all on its own, the, at the end of the day, the most important part of it is that the people in the region are self. Now, the, 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 the conflict also that has also taken for this long and for the resolution to come to an agreement, the reason why it has taken long is because the, the, the two gentlemen, the, the leader of the TPLF and Abiy Ahmed, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, are disagreeing on who should be the mediator of the agreement. <laughs> now, Abiy Ahmed wants the, 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 the AU, AU envoy. It's a gentleman, African Union's Horn of Africa envoy, Ulusegun Obasanjo, who is leading the international push for peace, uh, is the one that Abiy Ahmed wants to mediate the uh, conflict. Now, uh, now the TPLF wants the Kenya's outgoing president, Uhuru Kenyatta, to be the mediator. Now they have failed to come to terms on who should be leading the mediation. I don't know why they can't have both mediating so that everyone's interests are put at the center and they feel safe with whoever is mediating on behalf of them. So I hope that at the end of the day, those, uh, the, the two fighting sides come to an agreement and decide to put the interests of the people of both regions at uh, the forefront of this whole issue as opposed to who should be the leader of uh, this particular region. Now, moving on, uh, Chief Justice Owenye Doro cautioned <laughs> the lazy judicial officials to quit if they cannot work in the providing environment. Now, in the induction training of the new magistrates that was happening in, in, in Mukono uh, on Tuesday, early this week, this gentleman was attending along with the principal judge, uh, Flavian Zeja. But they cautioned um, mostly two things, corruption, which usually stems around uh, bail issues when uh, a judicial official is, uh, officer is issuing bail, but also on uh, the judgments. Obviously, we have, seen, we have seen time and again when, when judgments have been issued because in a particular favor, obviously, because there has been some gentle dog put in the arms of, of one of the judges now. In the induction training over, uh, led uh, by this uh, Chief Justice Alfonso Unidolo, he cautioned them and said, look, the, uh, the circumstances are not that bad. And, and if you cannot work in the current circumstances, you can quit. The doors are open. There are a lot of people who are really uh, are free, who are okay with working in the same environment. He said, and I quote, if you can't work in the existing environment, please, the doors are open because there are other willing, others willing to work under these circumstances. Now, uh, uh, the situation has become a problem for really an arm of government. The judiciary is a third arm of government. We, we have the executive, we have the legislature, and then we have the judiciary. Now, the judiciary makes sure that there is law and justice. Law and justice cannot be prevailed and cannot be realized if and if the, there is no independence first, but also if there is corruption. Corruption has been a common problem where the, the judgments have been rendered in favor of particular individuals. One, because probably they have paid money. Two, because they, also, uh, they obviously have the powers and, and, and they're above the law. And so at the end of the day, that also curtails the distribution of justice at that. And it means obviously there are some people that are going to be affected by those judgments when they're actually not uh, fair and free. And so I, 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 it was a call that he made, said try to make sure that you're as, as, as free and, and, and fair as possible so that there's no uh, such issues as these. And uh, justice is delivered at the end of the day. Now Flavian Zeja <laughs> said, he will not tolerate absenteeism as he will be visiting courts without notice to check on their performance. He also noticed and said that <laughs> he found cobwebs in the Amarata magistrate's <laughs> chair <laughs> after months of absence from the court. Now it means obviously it's not that the region does not or the district at that does not have uh, the, uh, the, the, the magistrate or they does not have cases that should be coming to courts. It means the judicial officers are not putting the interests of the offices at hand. You, they are put in the office, but they also do other things that are way out of their scope of work. Now, he, he cautioned them, said he's going to be visiting every one of them, but also he will, he will visit with no, with no uh, notice. That means he will, uh, he will run into you, find out whether you have uh, worked or not worked, or, or if you're misusing the office at that, or you, if you have allegations, obviously, of corruption, 
these issues always come along. Their, their judges are always alleged to have uh, to be corrupt. And so he cautioned them and said, we will find out and said they will not tolerate corruption, they will not tolerate absenteeism. The judicial officials need to work to their mandate to deliver free and fair justice, but also timely. There is a saying that justice delayed is justice, justice denied. So it means that everything and every when and, and, and when an issue comes uh, out, it is uh, addressed and put and given the priority as it deserves. Now this day, we are going to be talking about teenage pregnancy. It has been an issue that has happened in our community, especially now that we are coming out of the COVID-19. And, and the Minister of Health recorded 25% of Ugandan teenagers becoming pregnant by the age of 19. Now that is a vice that affects especially young ladies. Teenage pregnancy has happened in the lockdown. I have seen 14-year-olds, 13-year-olds carrying their fellow babies, it's literally babies giving back, birth to babies. And so how do we come to uh, top of that kind of vice? We have, are going to have to be having two people, uh, a lady and a gentleman, Angus Nasasida and uh, Janice Nkaja, who are from uh, Kugonza Youth Impact Uganda, and uh, they are going to be talking to us really about how do we curb that vice, what are they doing to make sure that they do, that we will top of that kind of vice. And so uh, we are going to go in for a short commercial break. When we come back, we are going to resume right at that with this particular gentleman to look at teenage pregnancy, look at how it has happened over time, but also how can we avoid that, especially if we want to move forward in our country. I like mentioning this time and again that we are the biggest majority of shareholders in almost everything, be it governance, be it everything that happens in the country. As young people, literally the future is in our hands. So we need to make sure that young people are safe, young people are protected, young people are ready, and, 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 and they are informed and in position to be are useless members of useful members of society. Sorry, so we are going to go in for a short commercial break. When we come back, those two uh, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen and a lady, are going to be with me as we dissect this particular issue. <laughs> Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Hi, beautiful Ugandans. It's your girl, Teddy Tenjo. Welcome to the Fancy Floor. Who doesn't see my hair, guys? I am super glamorous. Remember, this is the only show where we're going to be talking about fashion. Please, where are your things? Ah. What has been confusing you about fashion? <laughs> Sorry, you said I should not smile. For all the information about fashion, maintenance of body shape. I can wear bling bling when I'm going out. So you can wear bling bling going out or any occasion. We shall be doing all this in the fancy floor. Remember, it airs every Thursday right from 8.30 Tonight, with your girl, Teddy Tango. It is the fancy film. Fellow citizens, following the sequence of events, Uganda seems to be at political crossroads. I'm not a servant of anybody. <laughs> Madam, I know the law. <laughs> As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation, as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m in the morning be there don't miss the live discussion on the alternative uganda digital tv facebook pages and the alternative uganda youtube channel you 
have got to get up pretty early to go do something. We are the alternative dig talk. With our mobile studios, we are redefining TV presentation just as technology is setting the pace. We are blending our approach with fresh, perspectively designed breakfast show, The Mighty Drive, informative and entertainment show, exclusive and live interviews. We president said when we were the Jews in Pimaka Unga Kilo Bili. That's what a Kalia. Nini Bavaria Kilo Tan. We are Nemokulis, Iguanga never moon the killer. Jagara Queva Zad, the alternative digi talk. It was the Kanoka Mighty Drive. Era Nava to Uliza, Bona, Abali Kumikutu, Jagara Basaba Mugendo Mas or Noku Uliza. All given to you, just a click away on your phone, tablet, laptop, and smart TVs. As we are streaming live on our social media platforms, on the road and on the go. We are the Alternative Dig Talk. The Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Welcome back from that short commercial drive. My name again is Roger Studiawe and you're watching The Mighty Drive. Uh, this day, like I promised earlier, is that we are going to be talking about issues that are close to the country as a whole, but especially to the young people now. That's a problem that affects especially ladies and stories. We cannot have a discussion where we don't have a lady. We have an issue in the, uh, in the studio today that is teenage pregnancy. It has been a problem that has happened over time, but especially intensified in the COVID uh, pandemic. Now, moving forward, now we have a lot of young ladies who are mothers. You find someone who is 14 or 15, they are carrying babies. Now, what does that mean? It means there is a stagnation of almost everything. Some of them cannot go back to school. Some of them, obviously, you know the stigma here and there. They are, really, the life is not as good as it should be. Now, I have a lady who's going to be introducing herself. You tell us what your name is. And uh, what do you do? Who are you? Yes, let's begin there. Uh Uh, formerly at King's College Budo, but uh, recently I've been given an opportunity to go study at the African Leadership Academy in South Africa. I am an activist, an advocate, and I use creative poetry to put out my information there into the world. You know, sometimes it takes a lot more than just talking about certain issues, but it needs you to attach a certain significance. So I love poetry and I love advocacy. So I use my talent, I use words to you know make the voices the the unheard voices to be heard of I'm, I'm a debater so it's through my debate journey that i i fell in love with poetry and so i've fallen i've uh, due to that I've, I've been in contact with uh, many organizations like like uh, kugonza youth impact that have brought me this far and today i'm an, I'm a, I'm an ambassador under youth, kugonza youth impact wow that's quite a, a biography i should say <laughs> But I welcome you again to uh, the Mighty Drive. Thank you. We do have this show every once, uh, every day, from uh, seven to nine uh, p.m. a.m. So, uh, Janice, yeah, we are talking teenage pregnancy. What does that mean to you? Uh, sometimes we take things very plainly. You know, when you talk about teenage pregnancy, it's a teenager being pregnant. But in the literal sense, uh, if it was, uh, if we're dating back into the 1800s, it would be very normal because girls were married yeah. over at 15, 16, 17. So it was something very, very normal. But over time, time has evolved and with evolution comes change. Mm. So there was a time where a girl child was just merely looked at as um, 
a wife, a mother. But over time, it has changed. We are now uh, politicians, teachers, doctors. So in this kind of society, it becomes very difficult for a young girl who has been given rights to, for example, going to school, yes. to, to get pregnant at 16, 17, 18. At, uh, and currently, that's the age everyone expects you to be doing your most going to school, making connections. Mm. So when you get pregnant at that particular age, unlike... In the Western world, they are normalizing it. I do not know why. But in Africa particularly, it becomes very, very difficult, especially when it comes to job competition and ed education. So teenage pregnancy is basically throwing away your youthful years. Mm. Yes, under circumstances that sometimes we do not call for because some girls are raped, some girls are molested, yes. others are manipulated, but then but there's... others are married yes, off. Yes, like others literally. actually even married off, but then there's, there, there's that section of girls who also just take themselves there. Yes. We cannot also neglect them. So in that kind of case scenario, we are often faced with a challenge of young girls throwing away their future, throwing away their lives because of something we have no control over naturally. Mm. Yes. So as, as that has happened, now I'm, I'm looking particularly in Uganda because okay. if, you under, if you understand, we are literally the majority population here. And so having young people at that age, literally most of them, their dreams are really shattered at that. There are some that probably go there willingly or coerced or enticed with uh, small gifts here and there, and they end up in it. <coughs> but their dreams come to an end. They're, they're parents that cannot tolerate such of those things. They will yeah. tell you, look, you have done that, me and you, we are done. I cannot even pay school fees for you. It means go become a mother. And sometimes, obviously, the, the, the men are going to drop them. And it means, literally, there's no future for these ladies. Now, as a, a young person and as an advocate at that of uh, a teenage, uh, ending teenage pregnancy yeah. and, and using your talent as it is, what do you think as young people, as, before we look at the government and the rules it should make, before we look at society as a whole, what is it that us as young people, their fellow young people, can do to make sure that this vice actually can come to an end or at least reduce significantly? To reduce significantly. Actually, before I answer that, uh, before, I, I, before I came in, I heard you saying that teenage pregnancy became rampant during the lockdown. Oh, I would like to counter with that argument. Mm. It's that it's only because of that of the lockdown that it was noticed. It was happening at the same rampant speed before, but just because the world was paying more attention to other things, so no one actually paid attention to it. But when girls were now home and everyone is quiet and silent because everyone was in their homes, that's when people actually started paying attention. You know, in most cases we fail to see certain things because we do not have the perspective of it. Mm -hmm. But in certain particular uh, uh, um, situations, for example, the lockdown, everyone was home, daddy's home, mommy's home. Oh, that's when everyone decides to notice. But, but I, I felt like it, it did intensify. Well, it is, it, it, it's, it's probably true. It did. It's it probably did. true that uh, it had been happening. That is true. Yes, it had yes, been happening. Yes. And probably to a large scale at that. But also, the, the reason why I pointed out the lockdown yeah. is because there was that... I mean, we were just their idol, that idleness. And, and young people, kids were in homes. Th that's the irony. And, and, uh -huh, were in homes. <laughs> the irony is they should be protected. Yes. But it intensified because when they are in school, at least there's some level of... They are occupied. They have mm -hmm. school. They have books to read. Yeah. They have this and that. There's a lot of eyes on them, at least that way. They can try to at least fidget and, and keep in line. But now here you have ladies. Here you have young people and boys girls and boys at that because the pregnancy happens because of both of them. Yeah. You have them idle, they don't have nothing to do. You have parents who are frustrated looking at ways to survive. Yeah, And so young people are really literally not doing anything. And so when something like that that keeps them busy, busy comes along, someone feels like, well, why not? And, and the end is usually not pleasant. Obviously, when they do that, most times, that is if they are willing, it's, it so happens that it feels like it's normal. Yeah. Until it is not. And then we have had also the parents getting frustrated and feeling, look, I have this young lady, she has grown. Why don't I just marry her off? <laughs> and so that has intensified because of seeing them being around, being okay, idle, okay. not being productive. So it is possible that it did actually intensify because of the lockdown. True, true, true. But also I would like to blame 
not to blame, but it's, 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 we are living in the 21st century where technology mm. is the thing. So unlike before, whereby getting access to certain uh, types of information was limited, mm. currently I just tap you this thing, I have all the pornography, all, uh, it's not even about the pornography, the music videos we watch these days, the music itself we listen to, it's all vulgarized and sexualized. That alone is creating a huge gap and young people are always listening to hip hop, uh, trap, mm. all that music is always vulgarized and sexualized. So basically young people are struggling with the information that they are being fed by society out there because I'm going to watch a, a music video where women are half naked or yeah. men are half naked. And it will feel normal. Yeah, yes, yes, it's going to be normal. And uh, as young people at a very young age, when we are starting to consume all this sexual content, it becomes very, very difficult as people who are trying to deal with their hormones it's the very first thing. Uh, as adolescents, you're trying to deal with your hormones. At the same time, you're being fed with all this information. So genuinely, as a society and as young people trying to fight this, it's going to be a, 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 a community and a communal uh, work effort because we cannot fight it alone as young people. First of all, we are... Irony, the, the irony is that we are the highest number, we are the greatest population in this country, but at the same time, the least involved. Yes. The least involved in national matters, in decision basically making everything, decision country. making, we're the least involved, yet we are the highest number. So teenage pregnancy in general will root down from families to communities to individual effort because your parents can try to tell you. Your parents can talk to you, your communities can fight for you, but at the end of it all, it goes back down to individual decisions. If I want to have sex, I will have sex because that's a decision I have made for myself because sometimes it goes beyond our parents, it goes beyond our communities, it goes mm. beyond our schools because even if you sent me to school thinking that, oh, she's going to be safe there, mm. It all goes down to, if I've made this decision to do this, I've made it. So it all goes down to individual um, individual reasoning and individual decisions it, sometimes. Uh, now, the, the, the stakeholders are literally everyone. Yes. Yes. But, but I also understand that uh, I, I pointed particularly first to the role of us as young people is because we need to understand what is the role of each of the stakeholders. If you know it's a parent and you, your role is to do guidelines, gu guiding and, and parenting, make sure you do your role as a parent. Yes, yes. But what are we as young people supposed to do? I, I, I probably will make a decision for myself. Yes. But some, by and large, sometimes we make decisions, especially as young people, because of our and peers, people, yeah. because of the people around us. So if uh, I, I stay with, uh, let's say I stay in a house with like two other boys, and, and for them it is okay to have sex with whoever, whenever. Yeah. It is highly likely that I will also do the same because I'll find it normal because of the people I live with. Now, it means that the, our peers yeah. have quite an influence on what True. we decide to do with it. So that is why I was asking if uh, there's a particular thing, uh, a ways, approaches as young people that we need to, uh, to approach that, make sure that that is our role and that is what we need to pray as we also ask for inclusion in decision making yeah. to make sure that it, we, we, we make informed decisions that are close to us. I don't think there's a particular thing we can do because based on our different life experiences, mm. like I said, teenage pregnancy is caused by so many different things. Mm. So based on our different life experiences, it will all go down to who you are as a person. For example, Janice, uh, you go to this and this school, your parents tell you this and this and this, but then I've not been in a circumstance where I'm... I'm, I'm I'm er, uh, forced to do A, B, C, D, or if I'm pushed to do this and that. So it all goes down to individual, you know, sometimes circumstances are always, always bad. For example, people who are, girls who are raped or molested mm. by the most ironic of people. For example, fathers raping their daughters, uncles raping yeah, their nieces. So certain circumstances, we do not call them for. So in such a situation, I cannot tell you that as a person, I would have done this and this and this, whereby the circumstances were not in my favor. Mm. Because naturally, women are weaker than men. So if he decides to molest you, he's going to do it. And as much as you try to fight it, it's going to be very, very difficult. So certain, uh, certain circumstances call for certain measures. But as a young person out there, if you have been given the opportunity to go to school, if you have been given other opportunities 
to do the right thing, then do that. Th this, these are earthly things, I'm Christian. <laughs> so certain things can wait. Uh, yeah, you wait till you turn 20 and you're no longer a teenager. But, okay, that's bad advice. But, <laughs> but genuinely, I'm saying that teenage pregnancy is something that young girls are struggling with and sometimes it's because of the different life circumstances we are going through. So that particular thing you're asking me, we should do. So it, it largely depends on your circumstances. Some girls are married off by their parents. Yes. What am I going to do about that? And in most cases, these girls do not like have, uh, do not know their rights. You know, you could report your parents in courts of law. But because of the society we have grown in as yeah. African children, you you have to listen to your your mom and dad. You have to respect them. How do you take Their decisions your father to court? Father. Exactly, exactly. So you know how that sounds? Exactly. <laughs> so we have been raised in a society that holds parents of high regard. And that's and that's the right thing. Yes. But sometimes we... We, we, we are, lose the track. Exactly. And we cannot do anything about it. So it genuinely depends on your life circumstance to make a decision because i can't tell you as a young person do this and this and this yet you come yet i come from a completely different background yes. that you come from and you have yes. totally different experience so the answer to that question largely depends on that on an individual uh, are you a feminist from from a feminist you did uh, mention a women are naturally weaker than uh, men but I'm a, I'm a woman rights activist let's, let's, let's come to that for another time i just wanted to know but uh by and large yeah. Uh, it is possible. The truth is, sometimes, okay, there are things that are really beyond our control. Yes. Of recent, there has been a people, especially in my tribe, Vahima, they have that common tendency of marrying out young, of, uh, young ladies. Of recent, there was a video going around uh, of yeah. a, a young girl that was taken by force. And I saw another one yesterday on Twitter of, the, the guys are laughing, the kid was born in 2008, Eight. can you imagine? Yes, that's my sister. Can you? Uh, Eight. See? <laughs> Literally, she's, she's like, what, 14? 14, 15. Around 15, can yeah. you imagine? And this guy is literally sitting there. They are forcing her to sit, look in the camera, don't make the photos look bad. Can you, that is happening in the society that we have. And the funny thing is, they look like they, uh, some people have gone to school. So that is a thing that is quite beyond our control. That we can say that we need to have the other stakeholders do their role. Yeah. But I, I think it is also important that we understand the people we grew up with, the peers especially. When, when you go to school, it is highly likely that you're going to do what the others, the, the most of them are doing. And so maybe I think also at the schools probably need to do their job, that when you are at school, you are focused on why you're there. It is not uh, an issue of uh, my peers are doing that and, and I'm hey. doing the other thing. Have you ever been a teenager? I have. You have. I did skill. No, I decided to ask that irony question. Because w teenagers are, okay, people my age are the most, should I say, spontaneous people. Are you? How old are and you? Uh, um, I'm, I'm 17. Okay. So it becomes very difficult. You would, let me tell you, you will tell, you will tell a teenager, go to school. Uh, teachers are there. The headmaster cannot hurt them in how in dormitories. Yes. The teachers have somewhere they end. The house matrons or oh, what they have where they end. So that's why I go back to it. All goes back to, to an individual, individual because everyone else around you can push you to do the right thing. But if you decide not to, you are not going to do it. And that's what people my age are. It's it's like a trait, a basic trait of rebellion. It's something that pushes us that they all tell you do not do that but deep down you're like i'm still going to do it so in that kind of narrative you say peer influences sometimes you're influenced by that by other people but you have literally decided to be influenced but it's all back to decision you decide you have decided to be influenced by other people so yes because we go to different schools different institutions we have been to different schools and some schools have different structures. Like for example, I've been, I was at King's College for, for four years, yeah? Mm. And this is a place where there are rich kids, man. <laughs> You'll find someone who comes with lots of money for pocket money. You'll find someone, but we, because of that, their lifestyles are different. Yes. The way they spend their money is not the same way you will spend your money because you know, I do not have that kind of money. But if you're allowed to be influenced by that kind of 
no, that's how they spend their money and you start, oh, I'm also going to start spending my money like this. You're going to be doomed. So it's all about understanding your situation and then deciding whether or not I should be influenced to do certain things like that. So that was just basically a narrative I was giving you because sometimes young people are influenced by other people, but it all goes back to who are you? If I, start, if I started taking drugs, would my parents be able to take me for rehab? because it's very expensive, but someone else's rich kid will be able to go for rehab. You who's taking drugs, you cannot afford to go to rehab. So it all goes down as a girl child. Look at your parents, look at your society. If something like this happened to you, would you be able to recover from it? Because girls have recovered from it. They have recovered from it. They have gone back to school. They have uh, gotten jobs. They have been able to get their lives back together even after such things have happened to to them mm. but as a but it, it may not be the same case scenario for you you know this might happen to you and your entire life crashes to the ground and that's like 90 90 percent of what happens to most girls who get pregnant when they're teenagers mm. that the, the lucky 10 percent that is able to put back their lives together is is also advising young girls not to do this because it's generally affecting them so basically my entire argument is that it all goes down to individual decisions and, and now here is the problem the individual decisions are that they are deciding to be uh, to get pregnant so how do we avoid that okay uh we were that to swallow we were launching the to swallow campaign mm. uh recently last weekend and uh there was a group of panelists with different arguments on how to end teenage pregnancy and uh, an interesting uh, lady said we should teach young people safe sex. So that's condoms, um, the use of, uh, what are they called, uh, contraceptive pills. In my mind, I, I, was, I was thinking, <coughs> you're telling an, a 17-year-old, I actually raised this question to her after the panel, uh, you're telling a 17-year-old to use contraceptives. Uh, mm. Medically or scientifically, at least the small research I've made, contraceptives themselves affect the way your cycle works or how you're naturally working. Or, or so genuinely, you're going to use contraceptives. Let's 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 say from when you were like 15, mm -hmm. you want to decide to give your birth at around 25 or 35, and you cannot because they have potentially screwed you because they, they have side effects. They have side effects. If you did not know this, <laughs> deceptive have side effects. So con no continuous use of any particular drug has side effects. That's why if you constantly take Panadol every each and every time you feel headache, 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 you're going to reach a moment where it does not work anymore because your body grows resistant to it. Same way that uh, my dad is a doctor, so he tells me all oh, these things. <laughs> Do not be shocked. <laughs> so that's the same way contraceptives work. You are going to some are not up to standards, you know. Mm. They're expensive. They're not up to standards. So naturally, as a woman, you're going to be screwing yourself. And, you know, you, you reach a moment in your life when you want to have children, but you cannot have children because of the decisions you made when you're younger. So let's leave contraceptives. Condoms, yeah? The most ironic thing is that condoms are free in this country, I've been reliably told. Mm -hmm. But yet, uh, uh, sanitary pads are not free. Which is ironic, <laughs> because no, why would you? Why wouldn't you make sanitary pads free for girls who need them? Because in this country, girls are forced to have sex because they do not have sanitary pads. I have heard of a story like that. She was lied to that you know, if I I will give you sanitary pads if you do this A B C D. And why should? Why don't you make sanitary pads free? Because it's something women do not have control over. Natural, naturally. Menstruation is a natural cycle and it's something we do not have control over. Why are you giving out condoms for free whereby people have control over having sex? Yet you are not giving uh, out sanitary pads over something that girls do not have control over, which is very, very ironic. If there's any stakeholder in government listening to this right now, lobby for free sanitary pads to all girls in Uganda. It is better to give girls sanitary pads than to give free condoms out there. Because when you give free condoms, you're literally encouraging people to have sex. We are just making sure that they don't get diseases. <laughs> you're, you're just making sure that they're not having diseases. But it's, it's, it's the problem. If we are trying to curb things like teenage pregnancy, give the girls sanitary pads. I, I think it's two-way because let me tell you, the truth is uh, we need sanitary pads. I agree it is possible and we need... Uh, need to have sanitary pads for free. Yeah. 
But I also think it's important to have condoms for free. Mm -mm. Because let me tell you, if that happens, Put if, money. If, if that, if no. that does not happen, it means people are going to feel free to do sex, no. just live sex, and, and, and you know what Tax comes up? people. No. People do not want to spend money. Tax them. Let make them buy condoms. Tax them. And, and, and you're going to have a 17 year old who doesn't have a condom and, and they're going to have sex no, and then they're going to get pregnant. Why should a 17 year old, old even be having a condom? <laughs> you people! <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think Janice, I think she, she, she makes a very important point. Uh, we can control our sexual desires. It is possible you can wake up and decide I am not going to have sex today. That is a decision you can make, but you can't wake up as a girl and say, look, I'm not going to have menstruation this month. This is just something you have no control over. And so she does make a good point and I believe that there are some people out there who are listening who have the powers to do something. I pray and ask that, I joined my voice on hers, that you make that happen and make sure that uh, uh, sanitary pads are free and that young ladies have a short at the future. Now we've been joined by a gentleman, Angus Nasasia. I don't like to say people are late. I like to say people are delayed. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're welcome, sir. We've got to, it's good to have you in the studio. I'm going to have you introduce yourself. We are almost going for a short commercial break, but you'll introduce yourself. Uh, a few issues here and there, we can go for a break. Well, uh, praise God. You're Christian. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's interesting. It's unusual for someone to begin with. Praise God. <laughs> yeah, glad to be here. And I, I hope I'm going to do my best today. Okay. So, Angus, who, who is Angus for starters? Oh, wow. Well, Angus is a young man in Uganda trying to see how basically can wake up teenage pregnancy and all the child rights that we see happening here and there every day at least every week now for this month for this month we get to see a young girl is forced into marriage yes at an early stage the rights are being violated and our country seems to see nothing it's as if it's a usual cause last time someone said defilement is no longer no more we, we never think about defilement now it's something that is so common and angus basically is, is that one person who has come up with the young people to make a true cause for this. Can we get to know that children are being violated? And so I happen to lead a team called Kugonza Youth Impact Uganda that is majorly doing that for the country. We are creating a voice and we believe it will come to an end. Ah, thank you so much for the work you're doing. Now I was here with Janice and uh, we were looking at uh, uh, the issue of teenage pregnancy as a whole mm -hmm. and, and, and its prevalence in Uganda, particularly at the current times where we stand. Uh, I was looking at a report that says on average over 32,000 teen pregnancies are recorded per month, mm. on, average. on average. That means it could be more than that. But let's lose the average for avoiding of uh, contradiction. Mm. What, what, what do you think is, is, is the, the, the role of each of the stockholders? We are young people, I understand we are here, and we don't probably have much powers to end that by ourselves, mm. but we probably have something we can do. What do you think we can do? I just think we need a coalition. It's everyone's role, uh, leave alone being the young people. I strongly believe that we have a voice, we have seen what, anyway, when you read, you realize for the revolution, I would want to not go to that side, but there were young people that they came to have independence. So if the young people cannot get to know what's going on, then we shall stay like this. Mm. If the young people cannot stand out and say, no, this must end, then it will not end because if we have two, you said that, that, that about thirty two thousand, about thirty two thousand young people are getting pregnant. So you realize that it's everyone's role now, no longer the government. Mind you, even the government at some point, I realize it's doing totally nothing. I find you people speaking about condoms and sex. I always believe sex is a choice. It is. Uh, it is, it is a, choice. a choice. So meaning that having a condom is a choice. But mm. what you we can call buy whenever you want. Yeah, you can even have it at a free cost. But what we call the menstruation, it is something that is there and it will be there. So I, I think I've had these conversations about the pads, the government giving us free pads, and they are doing nothing. I do not see the reason why we can truly have condoms for free, and these young people have no pads. Yet we have the government schools, let me say that, we have the private schools whereby the government can say, you know what? Every time we are putting a number of pads at school, can you pick up your pads? I do not know and what you're That has happened, by the way, sorry for cutting you short, it has happened in uh, is it Scotland? Scotland, yes. It has happened of recent, they've made it a law. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that every institution you must have pads av readily available for young people. So why doesn't UNICEF anyway? I am sorry to say so, but why can't UNICEF at least carry this on? People are dying, people are living out of school because they do not have pads. Yeah. So what if the government of Uganda, you already see we have this budget that comes in abduptly. Mm. Why don't they think about these young girls that are getting pregnant? Mm. Why don't we enforce the law as the government now if I came to the government? Now to the young people ourselves, uh, she's leading a poetry now, uh, sorry, the poem bit of it. And every young person I would want to see, what are they going to do? Because I feel the government cannot do it for us. It's either if we can see it as young people now, get to know where we are going. I personally sit down and see 3,200 uh, 3, girls getting pregnant. That is poverty. Literally, if you're from a poor family and you produce a poor kid, you know, if God does not come back here, I do not see your life. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I come from a poor family. I'm fighting very hard to make sure that the person I produce at least will not go to Turi Antonda again. Mm. And, and I'm just imagining this one girl who is from Riantonda. She has been forced into marriage of someone who is, an ad, who is a drug an addict. addict. Yes. Where are they heading? And you find the government telling us about the GP and whatever. But these people do not know what's happening. Mm. The, the Human Commission, sorry, the Human Rights Commission, what's their role? Why can't we know our, our laws as mm. Uganda? The, I, I feel the rights to education are not being felt now. Mm. If these girls are pregnant, they will not go to school. Then the right to health, do you think they really have the right to health? Do you think these people can access Mulago Hospital? Not really. So they are going to deliver in a way that they will even get the other challenge, the fisitura. Mm. In my village, when you have such a disease, oh my God, you will stay alone. That's my village setting. Now, you get, I, I have been to Soroti, whereby there is a hospital. When you get there, you're like, oh God, what are we doing? So I really find that it's not Angus's, it's not Kubonza's, it's, it's not you as a moderator, but it's the oh, no. population, the 45 million. I asked my friends in Ethiopia, in Egypt, sorry, how is it there? And these guys are like, no, it's not there. We do not have that challenge of teenage pregnancy. But they still have their culture. Our culture here is fading. All you go to see is that girls, they, they want to engage in sex at an early age. The young people but, here. But, but culture has also in one who promoted the teenage, that kind of thing through which a forced child marriage, marriages has mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. and, it, and at least, at, at currently, I feel like it has actually kind of reduced. Mm -hmm. it, is, it was very normal you find a 14-year-old back in the 1990s mm -hmm. and 80s, a 14-year-old is ready to be married off and it's okay. In the, 19 now, in the 1990s, 80s, 70s there. I think the fact that we, we signed uh, the CRC, the Child Rights Convention, mm. from that time, I have a strong feeling that the government would have enforced these laws. Mm -hmm. Because when you read about the article, I think it's Article 34 that tells about culture and the child right. So from there, we should build on and get to know, oh, this is what culture brings, and this is what the child should have. Mm. Uh, I know, I'm sorry to say, I know you have done law, have. but there is what we call the best interest of the child. Mm. If I asked my friend who is 16, do you want to get married? And she's like, no. According to the law, she has the mandate to say no. Actually, legally, she's not even allowed to marry before 18. So I, I feel, yes, culture is one thing we can use, or is one thing we can do. But if culture is against the law, then we should at least have some other ways of dealing with it. Okay, that is Angus Nasasa for you. He's the executive director of Kugonza Youth Impact Uganda, and uh, these uh, ladies and gentlemen are particularly there to address an issue of teenage pregnancy. It's a, a vice that has happened in society, and it's one that is, co co that is continuing, that is multiplying. And so they are trying to do their best to make sure that at least their voice makes a difference in society. And so it's a call upon each one of you, and each, every one of us, to make sure that we put a brick in the whole jigsaw puzzle. Now we're going to go in for a short commercial break. In the next hour, we're going to continue the discussion, but also there will be an opportunity for you to call in in the studio or make your comment on uh, social media platforms so we can read them in the second hour. These two gentlemen are experts in that field and they will be answering your questions. So we'll go in for a short commercial break. We'll be right back.
Alternative Dig Talk. Real Issues. Real Talk. Fellow citizens, following the sequence of events, Uganda seems to be at political crossroads. I'm not a servant of anybody. Madam, I know the law. As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation, as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m. in the morning. Be there. Don't miss the live discussion on the Alternative Uganda, Digital TV Facebook pages and the Alternative Uganda YouTube channel. Hi beautiful Ugandans, it's your girl to detain you. Welcome to the fancy floor. Who doesn't see my hair, guys? I am super glamorous. Remember, this is the only show where we're going to be talking about fashion. Please, where are your things? Ah, teaching. What has been confusing you about fashion? You said I should not smile. For all the information about fashion, maintenance of body shape. I can wear bling bling when I'm going out. So you can wear bling bling going out or any occasion. We shall be doing all this in the fancy floor. Remember, it airs every Thursday right from 8.30 to 9 with your girl, Teddy Tenjo. It is the fancy floor. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Welcome back from that short commercial dry, uh, a break. Sorry, uh, my name again is Roger Suryawe, and I've, I have the privilege this day to be the moderator of this discussion that is very important and dear to young people. I am always, I am one person who really is is is, is pro young people, and I feel like we have not been given our space as we deserve. But also, we have not also been included. She did mention that in most of the decisions that happen in this country, young people are left behind. And now that is problematic because when we are the majority, but also the future is literally in our hands. And so if we are either not equipped or we do not understand what is going on, it means when we get there, what will, be, will we be doing? So I think we should uh, pay attention to young people as one, but also include them in the uh, mechanisms of decision making. So we are still uh, into the debate of uh, teenage pregnancy. It has happened over time and it is increasing. I want to get at the idea of, um, I did get the, uh, her position on what young people can do particularly. We are looking at stakeholders, we have parents, we have probably schools, we have maybe cultural institutions and religious, we probably have the government as one, but we, beginning from us, because it's a problem that we are facing as young people, what do you think we can do as young people, our role as one, before we get out to the others? To we as young people? Yes, for beginners, yes. To the teens now, because I'm probably the teenage. Yes. <laughs> to them. And us as well, wishes. Wow. <laughs> to them, I think the first thing is abstain from sex. Thank you. It's one thing I say. <laughs> yeah, I know you have watched TV. I know you see those funny, funny things. But my best message I can ever give to a young person is abstain. Look, we still have years on earth. After 24, after your campus, you're free to do everything that you need now. To someone who is above 20 years, because we at Gosa we believe from 13, sorry, from tor from 11, no, from uh, 13 years to 19. That's the age bracket whereby these young people fall into all that uh, rubbish. Yes. Now from 20 and uh, and above, my, my message is: Why don't you really leave these young girls 
why don't you see them as the next next great people of this nation? Because uh, the other side of the climate, if you cut down trees, then probably you will have a challenge which is desert. Mm. And now to the human being, I, I would want to say that when we continuously impregnate these young girls, then we shall have a challenge of poverty, serious poverty, by the way. We shall have these people not to go to school. Then you will find, that, uh, I hear people are crying about that. It's because we are not working. Yes. Young people are getting pregnant. The best they can do is sell muchomo. Yeah, I don't say it's very bad. It's also some job it's that someone can It's not the best employment, do. so it is yeah. okay to talk so about you it. You find that we shall have the worst, the worst country, I must say. Agenda 2030 speaks about the well-being of the citizens, but I swear upon the living in God, HIV will not be done by 2030. These girls are getting pregnant by us with the, young, the, the people about 20 years. They're having HIV or some, some get a challenge with Festura. Some will find it very hard to go back to school, meaning that the other thing of quality education will never That's be hard. felt. Yes. Now, uh, SDG number two speaks about uh, hunger. These people are hungry. I've been to one of the districts I cannot mention here in Eastern Uganda. I was there for a week. For a, I was just benchmarking with the community. They have fertile lands, but they are very poor. You find someone of 16 having three kids. They take one meal, just one meal. In Uganda, we still have people that take one meal, or even not. But remember, this person is carrying a baby. They are passing through a lot. So I feel now to the 20 young people, 20 years and above, it's high time we get to know that these are our sisters, these are our brothers. And if we cannot control ourselves, then they will control us at some time in a way that if they do not steal you, you that think are doing well, you have good jobs and whatever, if they do not poison you to take up what you have, I mean they can do all sorts. Because one thing I've seen, when I, and one thing I've realized that if you're not employed or you do not have the money, you will look for ways to have food on your table. Yes, of course. So it's a matter of knowing what we can do. She leads poem at Kugonza now. And through her, she finds it very fine speaking about everything through poem. So find out what one thing you can do through your passion. What is that one thing that you can do? Recently, we had a call from Makerere, one of the students in Makerere called Abraham. He has given his time to, to work with us as a volunteer. Uh, and he's going to teach these young people how to make soap dish, wooden one. So, oh. Yes. From trees, he's trying to put out that. But he's teaching the girls that got pregnant to at least find a source of income. Mm. So you realize he has seen what he can really add up to Kugonza, but also to the community. So I have a feeling that it's everyone's role to cap teenage pregnancy. We had the independence. If we really want to have the better independence in Uganda, this teenage pregnancy, this beast, I call it a beast now, must stop today. Okay. Uh, I think that is a message that goes out to every one of us because at the end of the day, I want to believe that either you have a sister or you have a niece, yes? So in one way, there's a young kid who is your relative and you don't want to see them go through these things. So as a perpetrator, please avoid doing that. But also as a friend of a perpetrator, inform them not to do that. But also as an individual, find something to do for those people who are facing this issue now. I'm going to go back to Janice. She's, it's very important that she's a teen, and then we are talking about teenage pregnancy, so it is important that we have you today. We did look at uh, the, the, the role of us as young people, and our position was majorly that it is an individual decision that you have to make, understand the dynamics of what will happen if you do have pregnant, and what your life is going to look like. But she, so she, she thinks, as, as much as everyone else has to do something, it, is, it goes back to an individual decision. And I want to agree that is very true. Uh, now I want to move on to uh, what, what, what could be the other stakeholders and what is their position on this, what they need to do. What we have a lot of people, we have institutions that are here. And, and uh, are the institutions really doing what they should be doing? Or what should they do at all? Uh, are the institutions really doing what they should be doing? So first of all, I'm going to start with uh, the fact that when you talk about teenage pregnancy, it's normally uh, revolving around the girl child. Yes. But 
uh, naturally, you need a boy child to get a girl child pregnant. <laughs> Yes. So, no, I'm dumbing it down. <laughs> That's true, yes. So, what are institutions not doing? You are not involving the boy child. You will constantly fight for the girl child's rights. You will constantly tell parents to protect the girl child. You will constantly, you know, condemn the girl child for getting pregnant when she's still young. But you forget that there is a boy child out there struggling with drugs. Yes. There's a boy child out there being infatuated. There's a boy child out there being influenced. So ultimately, if boys are not included in this struggle against teenage pregnancy, it will not stop. Mm. So my take on what a stakeholder is not doing, you are not including the boy child. Include the boy child. Teach the boy child. Train the boy child. Counsel the boy child. Because even if a woman comes and seduces you, when your mind is already made up that I'm not going to have sex with you, you will not have sex with her, you get. Mm. So train the boy child as well, because he, he potentially needs to understand the, the lengths at which his actions can destroy someone else's life, or pot potentially even their own life. Because some families you do not impregnate their daughters and you think you'll run away just like Damn. that. We live in an African society, witchcraft is real. <laughs> they will, sir, you are laughing, you people are laughing, but they will come for you. Some families do not take things as plainly. You know, being in Africa is one of the most interesting things because you will hear stories you will mm. never hear anywhere. You will hear people growing, growing cow legs. You will hear people uh, uh, turning into snakes and crocodiles. And sometimes it all sounds so mythical and interesting, but until it happens to you, that's when you realize that this stuff is serious. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, uh, jokes aside, uh, the boy child should largely be included. Include the boy child. Don't forget the boy child. The boy child also has struggles that you people are not seeing. Mm. And it's because of those particular reasons that boys are being neglected. Those particular reasons are, are, are pushing them to, to make certain decisions about their lives that are going to potentially affect the girls as well. Mm. So basically what stakeholders are not doing is that they are neglecting the boy child completely. They are letting go. Mm. They are focused so much on empowering the girl child that they are forgotten. That the boy child also exists and he also needs to be protected and fought for. So basically, I think that's what they have not done. Mm. The institutions. Yes. There's you know, one person who commented that little sisters are giving birth before us and it's making our parents pressure us into giving birth as well. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And you see, let me tell you, we are laughing at these things. But that is quite what happens in society. And now you make a good point of uh, the boy child. At the end of the day, they, they are, it's, it's two sides. Yes. One happens because of another. Yes. And they can't be teenage pregnancy if we all learned to, we were all equipped, yes? Yeah. If we all learned to control our sexual desires and, and maybe wait for when it is due or have free condoms, which you don't want. But <laughs> 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 I think it's important. <laughs> now, Angus, <laughs> she does mention a, a role of young people. At Gonza Youth Impact, what, 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 is the organi what, what is your approach to ending the teenage pregnancy as a well? whole? One, I, we have started up Boy to Boy boy to boy mentorship whereby we meet with the young people themselves about the boys schools. I've been to Mbara, I must say we are putting much of our trust and uh, we want to see for the next three years what mm. can we do in Mbara. Mm. It's one place that is being left out. Yeah, People are being affected but Mbara is surely poor. Mbara and Soronko, mm. they are doing badly. Mm. So we <coughs> believe Within these three years, we want to roll out and see the girls we found that we are already pregnant and the girls that we have already taken up on who are in school, what do we do? But about the boy, I think we have that program now called Boy to Boy Mentorship, whereby we speak to the boys now. Mm. Yeah, because not only the boys, anyway, even the, the people, the men, see what do we do as a community, as in by the society, what do we surely do? have this down because it all comes back to what she said it's everyone's role now in the community yes. when you go to Mbari it's everyone's community can we become a keeper for the other one when these people were fighting they used to watch anyway go back to school do you recall your friend like you, you have to t at least get to know oh her Dan is not here well, what's wrong with Dan yeah. so this is what is happening now this is what we are instilling into the people 
as your sister is so late, get to know what's wrong. If your sister has gone to the well, why would a girl go alone for sure? Now that goes back for advocacy. I don't know under their platform, those doing poetry. Why don't we have access to water in this Uganda today? Mm. Like why? Why would a girl move about 13 kilometers to look for water in Uganda today? Alone, and moreover alone. Why can't we have clean and safe water for these young people? So, so literally in the advocacy, there's just a lot of things in one. Yeah, uh, teenage pregnancy, I really find out that it is causing a lot of things for us. If we can really sort of that, we would have the best girls and the best boys go to school. We would have the best community with educated people, live around the life we are living in today. Mm -hmm. Whereby you find we started when we are 40 in primary. I must say that if I finished with senior six now, we are about five. Or six from the 40 yeah from the 40 from uh, the school I was in so you can just imagine where are we going that was my school I, I, I come from a poor village that was my school so what's happening now now that even girls have gotten pregnant do you think these people are going to access the best they can they certainly cannot and we have the national development development program that really shows you a good picture at some point I really want to tell the truth that I know that guy is, is watching his excellence. Why doesn't he champion this? It's my call. Because he has a statement that I cannot make. I know if the president stood and said, if they dare get to impregnating this girl, go to prison or do, they let them do something. It would be hard. Because I feel someone is leaving out. There is some other one person that is not speaking about this. The church. What are the church leaders doing? Anyway, what's police doing? Because if uh, last time at the launch, when we were launching Swaleko, someone said, you find it very fine. Now, community finds it very fine. When I impregnate your daughter and you take me to police, the next day you get to know we are sitting and under the accounts. Yes. So we no longer understand. know that the laws were there. You find it's everyone. What is the UN commissioner for, for health doing? What are the human rights, whatever organizations in the country are doing? Mm. So I really think it's everyone's role. If we can get, say, now, look, I usually see when we are going for votes, everyone is eager, shouting, Bob, why me, who, Kamirioni, whatever we are <laughs> shouting. Mm. Why don't we make a shout that, look, this must stop? Because if it stops, then we shall save the nation. Yes. I have a feeling that these young people that are getting pregnant, they are not a challenge to the government today, but they will be a challenge to my government, mm. to the government I will serve in, in my 40s. So it comes back to us now as young people, because these people I feel, over, I don't know how they think. And most uh, one thing that hurts me very much is that their daughters have been married off very well. Mm. But our sisters, our cousins, maybe our agements are being forced into marriage because I, I, I don't know. I don't think we have a platform. I really don't know what's happening with our country. Basically, Uganda. Here, Burundi is the same here. But I don't know what's going on. I, th I think it, it is an issue that has happened, not just in East Africa as well. I think it's an issue that is happening in literally in the world, even in Africa. Okay, <laughs> mostly in Africa. But where well, maybe the, but some the, percentage are of, yeah, the percentage varies, and the others are yes making some strides towards mm -hmm. making it better. So what's the challenge with now? That's my question. What's so, the challenge with Uganda? You did mention the pearl of Africa. <laughs> 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 if we were on a race, I saw upon the living God, we would get a gold medal for this. The, the, you did mention Swale, yeah, Swaleko. Swaleko. What, what is that? Swaleko is is a campaign. This is our second edition, and we are trying to show the community that look. When one gets pregnant, it's a violation already. So can we get to Kuswalako? Why don't we get ashamed of what we are doing? Mm. Teachers who impregnant girls. I've seen a clip moving from some institution here. Mm. Why don't we get ashamed of what we are doing? It, should I think we have evil in our heads? I really don't know. So the campaign comes out to really tell us that let's get ashamed. Okay, enough is enough. Uganda has been ashamed for, I, I remember those days when we, when we were best ranked for HIV. I must say we are best ranked for, for teenage pregnancy. We are losing a lot of brilliant young girls. And by the way, as she said, we forget to say, a lot of young boys are here in the remand homes. I don't know if you have at least had a chance to move there. 
No, I've not been to Nauru. Oh my Nauru. God, I've been to Nauru myself. I usually take my time, put off this catalyst of executive director. <laughs> moving like any other young person to check what's going on. Go and really find out what are, what what young boys are facing. You know, leaving your home because you impregnated a girl not knowing. Because you watched and when you ask someone he's going to tell you, No, I watched a movie and I wanted to really test what was on. And guys are in remand homes waiting for their eighteen years to have their sentence or have something that will happen to them. Mm. So you realize that the whole country is a mess now. But the challenge with the power of Uganda is that when you go internet-wise, they really show us the, 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 the force, they show you the <laughs> rig. But people inside, we are dying. I swear we are dying. Janice, uh, <laughs> I don't, sorry for, for, for laughing it off, but uh, this problem is, is for everyone. As, as, as a government, do, do we have laws that are against particularly teenage pregnancy because let me tell you this this common umbrella mm. of we have probably a penal code that says makes it a criminal uh, a, a criminal offense is it called offense yes it makes it a crime mm. for one to probably sleep with an underage or defile someone or rape them that is just a common uh, an umbrella agreement that look if we, ca we catch you doing that, yeah. that is going to be a problem. Mm. But do we have laws that are tailored specifically to teenage pregnancy? And, and do we really need that anyway? So let me also ask you. <laughs> <laughs> is it a law if it's not being enforced? It is probably not. Well, it's, it's on paper. <laughs> exactly. It? So even if it exists, it does not exist. But then we remove the doubt of we don't have specific uh, the, the identification of what the problem is and how to address it. That's why I asked you. Yeah. Is it a law <laughs> if it's not being enforced? It, it is a law on paper. On law? No. It's law. No. It, it, is is law. it is a law. You are a lawyer. Yes, I am. <laughs> It is a law, you'll say. It's a law on paper, it's a law. Mm -hmm. But then if we are to go down into the field, mm -hmm. it's not a law. Because it's not having any effect or any power over the citizens of its country. Uh, you are not Ugandan unless you were born in this country or you went to, to, to is it internal affairs, and internal affairs to get mm -hmm. uh, citizenship, citizenship in this country? Yes. So you, are, you identify yourself as a Ugandan because you were born in this country and it's your natural born right. And on paper, every single where your birth certificate, your every single place, you are Ugandan, and there is no doubt upon that. But if I uh, if I was born in Uganda uh, in, in in 2000 something, and I and my parents took me to the US, and I've grown up there my entire life, and I come back here, and people ask you, are you Ugandan? You don't sound Ugandan because over time the you accent. develop that accent. Eh? Mm. You don't sound Ugandan. You're lying. You're not Ugandan. So just because you went somewhere else and you changed and evolved language-wise, people will pretend that you're not from this country. I bring that analogy back here. Mm. Ugandans are pretending that these laws do not exist. We are not pretending. Police. They, they no, no. no. I mean, if a law is not being enforced, then it does not. not exist. Ugandans are pretending. Police is pretending. Major stakeholders in government are pretending like these laws do not exist. They are literally, they just, um, it's okay. You know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, Ugandans have this thing, government here to Yambe, or president here to Yambe, those national outcries. And I always, I always think, but the president is just one person. Yeah, um, and the 45 million. <laughs> exactly, and a lot of people under him. You know, sometimes I don't blame uh, leaders for what happens in our countries because under them are other people who are supposed to be on ground. Are under us. the president. No, leave alone. I'm talking about in the <laughs> political the structure. structure okay. There is the president, the vice president, the prime minister. So the chain goes down, mm. and it's supposed to be information from up going downwards to the person at the at the extreme at the end mm. to go and actually look for the problem that is affecting the young people in this country. Mm. So if we are to look at it, you realize that there is a chain there that's been cut because we often hear funds have been directed towards this and this and this cause. Mm. 
few months later, they are calling in the minister, questioning where did the funds go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's, it's, it's funny, but there is a gap there whereby we are always losing track. We could start something today, but along the way, it's broken. That's the same thing. That's the same thing with our laws and systems. Mm. They will amend the law, they will pass it in parliament, but then when it comes to a, the enforcing bit right. of it, but, but maybe then we don't have the doubt of we don't have uh, the law in place. But if we say we, we have a law made on teenage pregnancy, I feel like maybe there will be some level of seriousness, or at least some try. But we someone, have the penny word about that. Some, someone trying to say something. I, I was saying if we had maybe a specific law that uh, prescribes that. Mm. So having the law maybe would remove the doubt of mm. well, how do we go about but, this whole But issue. just as she said, mm. We really have the laws, but if a law is not really worked on, then it's not. Mm. I, I really want to bring a scenario that happened two weeks back. It was a Saturday, by the way, when all the Twitter, when all the leaders on Twitter were, you know, doing all the advocacy that I really loved. But today, I've not had anything. By the way, the video that was moving around was put off from Twitter. It's no more. The one about the, the girl who was post, yeah, who was scrubbed by the aunt and whatever that scenario. But I want to tell us that I'm trying to move on that thing and see what's going on. The nigger is not brought to court because that's forced marriage. To the other bit, okay, the girl was being kidnapped. Let's use that. What, use. What's going on? All you get to see, you see the RDC having the baby, sorry, that young girl and the mother. And they are like they have they have helped the guy. The guy is back home. But according to the law, what are the penalties of this of that kasako that was carrying the girl? Because I, at, I remember we had a discussion on Monday that very thing that, about that. On Saturday the girl was kidnapped. On Monday we had a discussion, and we really found out that even the border border guy was supposed to be imprisoned because he has some things to, to at least bring. He did a contribution. Yes. And then the guy who was driving, the tax guy, and these young boys who have gone to school carrying their own sister into a car. There, there was another one. I, was, I don't know if you have <laughs> seen one. There was one was on Twitter. I actually saw it yesterday. Mm. Of, of uh, a young... 14. Uh, the uh, one of 2008. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your, the part of Uganda. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and let me tell you, they look like people have gone to school. That's the funny part. So at the end of the day, you realize that uh, the, the problem is, is quite even not in the hands of the leaders as one, mm. but also as the young people as one. So who, who, who is responsible? Who do we run to when these things are going on? Now, happen? to me, I, I, I would want to say, when it comes to the law, we have the Uganda humans, huh? Uganda, I, I'm forgetting. Human rights. Human rights Commission. Human rights Commission. Yes. Okay. It's their role, it's their mandate, that at least everyone who is even six years can get to know their right. We have the equal opportunities. Mm. What's the budget doing, Swear? Why don't we get to know our laws? All they are teaching us from primary is, is California. Why don't we get to know our laws? <laughs> All they are teaching us is nuisance at some point. And you find someone is going to get to campus. By the way, some people have left campus not knowing that they have a right to at least have education. Not knowing that I have to walk into a primary school, any government primary school, study and go. Some of us, after senior six, the best we can get to know is go and dig. Whereby you can even apply for a government scheme because these things are put by the government. And who is the government? The government is me. So you find we do not know, our, we do not know the law. Now we have uh, the parliamentary forum on, 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 on laws. What is it doing? If it's about the law, basically about the law, I have a feeling that we have institutions that should be blamed. Mm. Federation of Human Rights here in, in uh, after the, the, the after the, the embassy, the white embassy, the American embassy. What are they doing? Defenders for something, something. So I have a feeling that institutions have the budget, but they are not implementing mm. the budget. I believe through the government, through I think it's now chairman, the chairman Mao, through his ministry. They should put out a campaign on know your right, mm. especially for the young people. You in, just yeah. slow and the sex, I guess. That is. <laughs> in that, at least we get to know our laws. Now, the Minister of Gender, 
it's their department, it's their role, it's their mandate that every young person should get to know their laws. But are these people knowing their laws? Do, do you engage uh, these departments? On, I've on, gone to some departments. Some of those campaigns, because maybe... Yeah, yeah I do. I've yeah. gone to some departments. I will not put it here. But, but people will think you're a young person, you've just left campus, you know? That life, they're like, e -e, two year, three years as an organization, you really have nothing. Mm. Yeah, uh, even when you ask for partnerships, they're like, okay, let's see through what you are doing. Uh, and I see they have that bureaucracy. But even when we have the bureaucracy, young people are dying, young people are perishing, the country is perishing, their generation is sweet and good, uh, uh, moving in posh cars. You know, the VAs are becoming like cartoons in, in Kampala. You find everyone having a lead car, wee wee wah wah. Like, seriously, but the young girls and the young boys are not accessing their rights. They do not know about their rights. I have a feeling that the government should think wise now. Yeah, we are the pearl of Uganda, sorry, the pearl of Africa, but at some point I feel we are going astray. If this really continues, we are going astray. I want us to break down each of the roles of each of the stakeholders. Yeah, I want you people to, because it is a, a platform now mm -hmm. that Kugonza Youth Impact has and, and you are an expert in this field. I want you to say that probably we have parents, you should be doing that. The government, you should be doing this. So that will remove the idea of this is someone's, you know, when it is not, it has not happened to you yet, mm. you feel like it's an <laughs> issue that is very far away. Yeah. And so I want us to break down each one of the stakeholders and tell me, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Look in the camera and tell them, look. The oh. government is supposed to do A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. As a parent, do this and that. And we'll end the problem of the teenage pregnancy. Wow. To the children themselves, the first law you should get to know is knowing your right through every department that you can access. But above everything, abstain. That is to the teens and, and the young generation down. When I get to the parents, I've always advocated for family fellowship. Even if you're a drunkard, Family fellowship adds up something. My mother used to tell me HIV is very bad. When you pregnant someone's daughter, you will become poor. And I've grown up with that. Up to my age, I do not have a girlfriend, I'm sorry to say. But I've grown up with that. <laughs> I should be sorry, that's a <laughs> <laughs> I've grown up with that, like, yeah, my mother has always done that. And maybe a bit of my uncles have always told me what it means. It all comes back to the family fellowship. Now, let me go to the police especially the child unit department they are missing out in april we had 1000 cases that were not worked upon of child rights violations something like that in the part of uganda sorry in the part of africa so you realize that they are not playing their role as police now culture wise they have a mandate of having a cut. Yeah. Why doesn't every kingdom engage their community? Because I believe if Oyo stood up, I don't know, they call them his excellence. Anyway, if Oyo the king stood up and said, this must stop, he has that enforcement. Mm. He has a cabinet. I've been to the parliament of Uganda. They have a cabinet, they have everything. So I have a feeling that they have a role as the cultural leaders, as the cultural institution to speak about this. I already see we have a run whereby everyone will run. When, when it's his birthday, everyone would want to engage. Mm, it's for AIDS mostly, actually. Why doesn't he have one in teenage pregnancy? And mostly, by the way, people here are having a challenge in Central. They are forced into marriage because they do not know. Some of them have sex at a tender age because they have not gone to school and they need what to eat. They're having sex for money. Sorry, sex yes, for money, yes. Livelihood. Because they do not. Why doesn't he? Okay, make, let him make a run as a cultural leader. Let me come to the government. Basically, through him, you said he's a one man. But I have a feeling that the government has all these departments, but they're not doing their role. They really have the mandate to stop this. They really have a mandate to make the laws and implement them. Mm. In, in the COVID, I was advocating for a social grant for the girls that got pregnant because we have a system whereby these girls that have given pregnancy through the hospitals can be helped. But they, no one was helping. Even when I reached out to some youth MPs, some MPs, they felt it was not happening. Yet down in South Africa, guys did that. And girls were helped. After the COVID, girls are going to school. Why don't we learn what other African countries are doing? Because if we are the pearl of Africa, 
I feel we should maintain that name, but at some point on the panels, I will always move on. I will always tell truth to the health bit that is ending now. Uh, I think the other institution that really has to do a lot of work, there are these agencies that God blessed us with, the UN things. International agencies. The, the international agencies. Why don't they come out and really do this? Because I have a feeling that we have the human rights department that is supposed to be letting the people of this nation know their rights. We have UN women. We have UN women. There is a, there is a gap that we usually forget, and I've tried engaging these people at least for every function we have, for every engagement we have, we are there and with them. We are forgetting about the refugees and the host families. I pray that you can have a documentary, it's my request, on teenage pregnancy in one of the refugee camps in Uganda. You get to know what's happening. I personally take my time, move in, put on like the one putting on. Sometimes I even put on bad clothes to, to get the information. But these people are being misused mm. because they're in a country that is not theirs. But we shall speak that. That's the challenge I've seen. Now, can, uh, can we have all these agencies get to know their mandate that even when you bring someone in the country, she or he has a right. Mm. So I have a feeling that every department, I mean the companies, the Coca-Colas, the whatever, they, I, I believe there is something they can add up to the students who are going to school. Why doesn't the government make a rollout and say for every company in Uganda, you will always put in a percent to buy a pad for a school-going child. And, and that is an issue that is close to her. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have a feeling that everyone, you people here, why don't you give these young people free air? I don't know. I'm not saying, yeah, free air. But why doesn't the media and, and TV shows have that one program for the teens especially? We are giving free air now. Yeah, 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 yeah it's fine. <laughs> but I'm looking at that. Let them engage. Mm. Why don't we have a vivro just for these people to come in and, and, and know their rights? Because the best you get to know, we have someone coming from Nigeria to sing, but we cannot organize our own young people who are really doing well, or even not doing well, but to come together and learn. Mm. So I have a feeling that every industry, every institution in Uganda is responsible for what is going on. And if we leave it at that, ah, Nabuma, sorry, this young, this young girl or this young boy is not of my own. Let me leave it at all. Cast them in, uh, in my house and my kids are well. Then it's not well. Okay, thank you so much, Angus. I think uh, he, did, he does talk to the fact that uh, he did, you did break down a number of uh, responsible entities. And, and obviously coming to the top of this problem means that we need some collective effort, we need to join hands. Most of the things don't happen by themselves. And let me tell you, at the end of the day, when, when that happens, it is all of us to rejoice. So we, we cannot afford, we cannot afford to sit back and say, look, that's a problem that's very distant from me. Probably I have the money, my kids, I look after them. So they will not need those handouts that they will have to go for sex to get them. But at the end of the day, your kid is going to grow up in a society that is like that. And sooner or later, let me tell you, in your generation, even if it's like another generation, three generations down, something like that is going to happen. Now, there's been news that uh, former uh, security minister, Major General Eli Tumwini, has passed, and uh, the details will follow as to the cause of his death. There has been some rumors about his health here and there, but it is reported right now that he has uh, gone to live with the Lord. May his soul rest in peace. Now, Janice, uh, he does, I, I want you to give us also your perspective on each, each of the roles of those stakeholders. And, uh, and I want you to speak more to the uh, PADS thing. It is, it is an issue that really caught an attention. I, I felt it made a lot of sense when she said it is a choice to have sex, it is not, not a choice to have uh, periods. It is quite, that's really a, a very <laughs> honest reality. So I want you to speak so much into that and, and, and make us understand why that should be the order, but also a little bit of a breakdown on each of the roles of those stakeholders in the whole end to, of teenage pregnancy. Um, okay, so the, 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 the roles of each stakeholder, I would say. Uh, you know, I've always been... Uh, I already mentioned that my dad is a doctor. He is. So 
uh, when he comes back from work, no, in fact, we were one time going for a vaccination, was it a yellow fever? Mm. And then the lady at the counter, who was the secretary at the hospital where we were, was supposed to sign into the, the yellow fever card. Mm. But she was so frustrated, she quarreled and quarreled. We were, we, we were so confused, why is this woman frustrated? But then when we moved out, my dad said, because he, he's in the medical field, he knows this, is like, mm. But those, those, those men up there that employ uh, these secretaries, they're not considerate. How do you make someone work for 12 hours straight from morning? Give them a break, give them shifts. He said it in Luganda. Mkazi wa toy, bani zono kwa ngamsa sule mitu walo chinano mwez. Tomula wa kuyomba, tomula wa kunyiga, na ina sende ziba mwate zimara. So from that basic, yes, from that <laughs> basic argument. Yeah? Sometimes people do not do what they're supposed to be done. Because essentially they're not paid enough. That's that's on the role of of both the major entities and stakeholders. Mm. You know, money is always given out by government. It's always released each and every every year, financial year. They're releasing assuming that two billion for this, for that. But then along the way, the money disappears, and the actual people who are supposed to get this money to implement their jobs. They do not get it. How do you expect me to wake up every single morning to go fight for the rights of a girl I do not know anything about, yet you have decided not to pay me? You know, sometimes voluntary work is good, yeah? You are motivated to help someone. As a human being, it's the right thing to do. But sometimes it gets too much and you need a push, a motivation. And currently money is a motivation. You tell me you're going to give me money, I'll be there. <laughs> so as, as stakeholders, as government entities, put the money where it's supposed to be. Follow up where the money is going. Let the right people get that money and let them use it the right way so on sanitary pads uh, the government has a lot of power I, I want to one day be in government also and make noise he has said he's going to be in government <laughs> when he's in his 40s yes we shall be there we shall make noise for you people but essentially uh, a friend of mine says that if you believe that the way to solve the problems in uganda is through government you are living in the stone age and i practically i, think I, I tried I tried to, 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 be, to, to, to argue with him, but when I sat down and analyzed it, he's kind of right. Because the government, government, Fejetuita Parliament, is just a building with a few thousands of ministers we chose after they pleaded for our votes, but the actual government is the people. The people are the government. So if you're to look at it in a, on, a, on a more... <coughs> dummy, you saw what happened in Sri Lanka. Yes. If people decide, if Ugandans decide that we are going to stand up and make a difference, the difference will come. Ugandans haven't decided yet because they are probably frustrated, they do not have the money, they are tired people. But as Ugandans, if you decide that we are going to fight for the girl child, we are going to push for the campaign for, girl child, for the girl child to get pads, it can be done. So this whole thing of government, government, government again a bayamba. This is a blank fact Ugandans have to understand because the government is made up of people who are also just there to fill their bellies and help their families. As much as you, you do not want to... Because the amount of money I mean, uh, uh, an MP gets yo, with allowances, new car, new what. So originally, most of the people who go to government are... Some people have good causes. They're like, I want to help the people in my society. Mm -hmm. But when they get there they will get infiltrated by the power and the money and they'll eventually neglect their duties. We see all these things on TV, ministers shouting, MPs shouting, uh, politicians are shouters. That's what my literature teacher used to call them. Politicians are shouters. They will come, they, they are good at influencing people. They have the persuasive tongue. So as politician, if you know you are good at influencing your people, please do that. Influence your people to go and shout for their rights because this is their right. So on the issue of pads as generally as a government, like you said, Coca-Cola, they can, they can make all companies here to contribute a certain percentage to buy pads for the girl child. And it's very, very possible. They, they, the funny thing with Uganda is that they spend a lot of money on things. Recently, they are buying Roko. Yes. I have, yes. They spend a lot of money on things that essentially... Are not priority. 
No. Yes, we are not looking at the priorities. Health is given very little in this country. Agriculture, which is the backbone, is given very little in this country. But then you find them each and every year, each and every financial year, giving out money for new cars for MPs. Let me ask the old MPs, can't they like pitch in their cars to the new MPs? Because you can't tell me that all the five years you have worked in government, you have not been able to buy yourself another car, but you are depending on the car that government has given you. <laughs> no, because we spend a lot of money on things that essentially are not going to yield. My mom is a business lady, so she's always talking about investment. You invest in a product that you know eventually is going to yield to a certain amount of money. Because as Ugandans, if you're going to fix the problems of poverty, we have to largely involve ourselves in the entrepreneurship because business, jobs are not there. Jobs are not there. Uh, I'm, I've, I'm going to grow up. I've grown up in an economy where thousands and thousands of graduates graduate each and every year and thousands do not get jobs till date. That's the reality we are living in. But this same, I have a lot of things it's okay, going it's okay. with this government. No, because uh, uh, the, the CEO of Uganda Airlines, she's being pestered over not having academic credentials, uh -huh. credentials, all level certificates. But at the same time, you find a graduate who has the all level certificate, the advanced level certificate, the diploma, and they don't have a job. That's the irony. But someone else is being pestered about not having those credentials. But you who has the credentials, you cannot even get a job in this country. So it all goes down to, does it really matter anymore? So we are living in broken systems that will take a miracle to save. So as a government, put the money where you're supposed to be. Please follow up on that money because it's taxpayers' money. It's, tax, it's Ugandans' money that you are misusing. You take it away from them, claiming that you're going to help them. But ultimately, their money disappears. Uh, we, we one time made a joke with my dad. We were on the road. I'm like, but then, then, then I told him, but why are you walking like that? You're going, you're going to be hit by the car. This is not your father's road. <laughs> and he's like, no, this is my father's road, my grandfather's road, my great-grandfather's road. We pay tax to pay this road. This is our road. And, and that made me understand into a deeper analysis that he, he acknowledges that his taxes are doing something. Mm. But while Ugandan out there who's living in poverty, whose child is not going to school, they do not see where their money is going. So government and every other entity, stakeholders, pay attention to your jobs. Pay attention, we have put you there. Ugandans are investing a lot of money in you. If you did not know that petrol, uh, average Ugandans are shouting, but for you it's, it's given, you don't even have to bother. So put the money where it's supposed to be. We are, invest we are investing so much money in you so that you could give us back something in return. Mm. So as, an, an, as, as a major entity or stakeholders in, in government, please play your job. Get out of giving girls, girls pads because it's possible. You can do it. Can. You can do it solely. Why, why were we given the masks? We were trying In to prevent bro. COVID. Pre preventing <laughs> COVID. Why don't we prevent the girls that are getting pregnant? Because yes. they do not have the pads. If the government can really say, uh, you know what, put the pads there. And the pads are made. And, and, and let me tell you, uh, now literally masks for, for every Ugandan. For every, 45 minutes. For the 45 minutes. No, and the, 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 the teenage girls, yeah. those who are adolescents School. and need uh, pads and all that, they are less than... The whole country. 20 million. So we, it's actually much easier to do that than to distribute I have masks. a feeling that the Minister of Gender Honorable among Betty has a role to play on having the, the, the Ugandan pad. I, I have done this, by the way. I was called in some office to speak about this. Now, the first lady, who happens to be the Minister of Education, <laughs> you have a big role to really prevent the young girls that are leaving school because they do not have the pads. I mean, as a minister, if she puts a document requesting for the government to look through on how we can have pads, Minister of Education, how many young girls are getting out of school because they do not have pads? Mm. Now, let's come to the Minister of Health. Uh, I, I'm forgetting the name. The minister herself. Healthy wise, how many young girls Ching. are Cheng? How many young girls are leaving school and, edi and, and ending in two nuisance disease? Because they literally didn't have pads, they now have HIV. Mm. Where are we heading to? I now go to Honorable, this former SG, the mm. one of specialties. 
Kasure, who happens to be the one of SDGs, we shall continue speaking about the SDGs before they were not even the SDGs. There is that other name they had. MD, oh, is it? <laughs> M what something something. So you realize she has a big role to play on, G, on SDG number three, which is good health and well-being of the citizens. Mm. I'm bringing every partner here to see what can they do. If we have a, a one document from Gonza supported by these people, it would really work. Now, mm -hmm. the office of the speaker who happens to speak for every Ugandan, the fact that she's the mother of this country on that level, she has a big statement to make and approve this car budget for every young person, for every young going student to have a pad, at least at school. Because either these people can pick pads at school when yes. you enter into the gate and you know you're going to get into your periods, pick a pad from your metro and have the pad. Mm. UNICEF has the mandate, at least I know, under the, uh, the, 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 the United Nations programs and whatever, UNICEF has the mandate to sit down with the all agencies and have this. I mean the UNDP, they have a role in this, having the pads for every young person in Uganda. The cultural leaders, if they stood up, as you said, if we can have a strike... The, the, the majority community influencers. Yeah, if we can have a strike, I, I'm just looking at strike, where I have, I, I have OU, I have here the, the, the Uganda king, king, I have the head of police coming out to the parliament and say this must stop. Education is one thing by the way we need. If we really need the best, the best, the best leads in Uganda, anyway, in the Pearl of Africa, as they call us, then oh, yeah. it all starts with education. And education all starts with having all young people have access to education, not having these boys go and study. Because <laughs> for us, we cannot have periods. <laughs> they don't call us the Pal of Africa. <laughs> <laughs> the Pal of Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? So I have a feeling that it's everyone. We are striking that, uh, that, uh, that thing. We, we believe to have a strike on, on pads. Okay, uh, there's, uh, I'm going to go through a little bit of comments. Uh, yes. Time is literally running out. There's a, a one Nabukera who says, she's all right, the parents have played their part, school have played their part. Now it's the children to play their part by making rightful decisions. For example, when I was in school, was still in school, Ngadi taught us to abstain. And we did. Then we gained now this era, you, you may think, I think, era that, like yeah, this the, time. The, the, the you may think they have not heard of abstaining. <laughs> <laughs> He said, uh, Roger, you can take your father to court because he's not above the law unless he's connected to Museveni. Because <laughs> why would you marry off your little baby like who does that? And, and, and uh, you, I mean, <laughs> you think you're still a good parent. No. No. Um, who else? Uh, Tumse Mekato says, Janice, Nkaja, you need to know that the making of the laws is different from the enforcement and implementation. Mm. So where the law is, where the law in your views are not being implemented doesn't mean there's no such law. <laughs> Christopher looks, I'm watching from Ontario, thank you so much. When Janice talks about companies like Coca Cola contributing money to buy pads, I remember its contribution during COVID 19 where it donated yellow jelly cans. <laughs> you can't <handle> them. <laughs> uh, Lillian said it's sad that most cabinet ministers are women, including the vice president, speaker, and prime minister, but they haven't done enough when it comes to a girl child. I think that is a very uh, the, the, the naked truth mm -hmm. and one that is very sad because they are literally uh, st sitting back on these issues mm -hmm. and they are issues that are really close, especially now being that they are women. Well, they have always said women are being left behind, but even when they are put there, the issues are not put across. So I think it's also a call uh, for each one of them. So I'm going to give you, each one of you, a few minutes to make your concluding remarks. Uh, time is literally running out. I'll begin with the ladies first. Let's follow the ladies. Um, uh, first of all, I thank you for, bring, for, for, for hosting me here. It's not every day that, <laughs> that a young person like me is hosted. But uh, genuinely, uh, as a society, if we want to end uh, teenage pregnancy, if we want to make a potential difference, let us make it a collective effort. Let us take it personal. Ngo umuntu, umuntu wa wansi chiba chizibu nyo Okutambuli la mungeli eye nja ulo For example, if we do not fight for our rights for, the, for your girls, for your children, for your baby girls, for your mothers, for your sisters As a society we are going to collapse and die So as a man out there, as a son, as a father Fight for your sister's rights, fight for your mother's rights, because 
Oh, she, you, you also said she, to do a poem, a poem for us. Hey, you can do it. Do no, I, I will. I will give you a poem, and you 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 will show them later on. <laughs> but I genuinely, let's work so hard to fight this vice because it ultimately affects us as a society on an individual basis. Thank you. Yeah. You, you you don't want to give us a poem. She can, can give us the one. She, she can <laughs> give us a poem. Yes, she says she poem. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we live in a time, day, and era where everything is revolving about ourselves. We do not care about whether or not my neighbor's child is doing right. We are poisoned by the fact that we are being selfish. I am a girl child. My mother has always told me that my purity and pride hold me best. She has told me to keep safe, keep locked, let no man touch you because society will see you different once you carry that baby and you do not know who the baby daddy is. Mm -hmm. My mommy has told me, young girl, watch out for yourself. The world out there is not as sweet and kind as you think it would be. Young child, listen to me. But I grow old and older and I think I'm pretty and gorgeous and I do not pay attention to my mother's words. I fall into a trap that I cannot get out of and now, well, what she foretold has come true. I am now a nuisance in society. No one wants me no more. I have a child whose father I do not know and I am stuck. My education is now no more. My future has fumbled to the ground and I can't do nothing about it. This is a shout. This is a cry for help for the girl child in Uganda that's struggling with teenage pregnancy. We are fighting for our lives, but no one seems to care. As a society, we should come as one to be better and fight for our rights. Thank you. Wow. wow, thank you so much, uh, Janissa. <laughs> thank you for making your time. Thank you for the poem. I do understand and believe personally that it is important that we all use our talents. <laughs> you are right for using yours. And uh, thank you so much. I want to say thank you as an individual. Mr. Angus, please make your concluding remarks. I, I must say, I welcome everyone to Kugonza Youth Impact Uganda with your passion, with your contribution. And I've already said, I remember someone who said when we were starting, when I was starting all this, someone said, you're doing nothing. But I at least I've saved some people through Kugunza. Not me anyway. The organization has saved some people. Now, when she stood the first time we met and she gave in a poem, I felt, wow. Well, like we I am feeling now. <laughs> we can do something. <laughs> How many young people can even do such? It's already advocacy. It's already a message for someone. She's leading that for the rest of his life, as long as she's willing. And we're having that every Friday. We shall always engage young people, come and do this. Let them get to know, because I believe there is power in information. Yes. As God the Youth Impact Uganda, our mandate is, can we have a country free from teenage pregnancy? Yeah, other things are coming around the HIV and everything. But I believe, as she stated it, if she really, if a young girl abstains, you will not have HIV, that's the truth. Maybe if you get it from some other place. But, but you find your life is good, too. Mm -hmm. The community will not say you're bad. Yes. So my message to the young people, my message to the young people everywhere, not only here in Uganda, in Africa, my message to you guys is abstain. Please abstain. By the way, it's very hard. Those nine months are the worst months you can never have in your life. Two is that you change to becoming a mother when you're a child. And it takes responsibilities becoming a mother. Now to the government and other institutions, why don't you wake up from the slumber? The, the, the Bible speaks about this in Proverbs. Slumber note, our country is moving away. We are no longer the power of Africa, apart from what we put on the internet. But in our country, Uganda, I don't see any pearl in the country itself. When my sisters, when my, and my wife that I was supposed to be married, you might find she has been impregnated. That's why even I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> it is that you might find that could be the cause. So I have a feeling, minister, the minister of education, why don't you come out and speak about this? 
all we speak about teenage pregnancy, by the way, is that we sugarcoat teenage pregnancy. Mm -hmm. We feel it is something we can go with. In the COVID, one of the big guys in the country said, let the girls get pregnant, but we first prevent COVID. Mm -hmm. And when I made a statement on NTV, people started calling me, Angus, you know, you're speaking against the big man, how do you do that? But it's for a fact that when we continue having teenage pregnancy, I do not know where we are heading to. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, lady and gentlemen, uh, for your time, first of all, and uh, for what you're doing with Kugonza Youth uh, Impact Uganda. It is quite a commendable work, I want to say, and uh, I have known uh, this gentleman for quite some time, and he does some great work at, at Kugonza, and now I can see, obviously, the, uh, the, the brains in poetry. I'm one person who loves poetry, so that is, that is so close. So I want to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, who are watching us from the other side of the screen. Uh, for keeping your time, for being with us today, and for always being with us every morning. Uh, the Met Drive happens every 7 to 9 a.m. of every day, every week, Monday to Friday. And uh, this day in the afternoon, we most likely will have a diaspora link that is going to be here with the next one, uh, Prince Ego. Uh, they are going to be talking about issues to do with uh, and, and, and that are happening in the diaspora, anyway, like you hear the, the title. And tomorrow in the morning, Marangira Kechimbuku is going to be here with uh, Farida Bikovedi and Dan Uldanson Mukose. Uh, talking everything culture and then in the afternoon of that in the evening we'll have the voltage by Lydia Nwe do Mumbeja. She'll also be talking about, uh, she'll have some young people here that will be talking about the issues of national importance, especially as far as politics is concerned. And on Saturday in the morning at 10 a.m. we'll have uh, the uh, Dr. KB uh, Chiza Besige. He's going to be here also telling us what is happening in the political space and what uh, people need to do uh, to make uh, their lives better now. For this day, my name is Roger Suryawe. It is good. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. I'm going to say have yourselves a very good morning. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. Fellow citizens, following the sequence of events, Uganda seems to be at political crossroads. I'm not a servant of anybody. Madam, I know the law. As such, Alternative Digital brings you the Interfest show with retired Colonel Dr. Kiza Vesuje. Let's keep on the same page on Alternative Digital. As he gives you the alternatives on the transition question, rule of law, human rights and freedom, youth inclusion in governance, economic stagnation, as he confirms. I'll be always here Saturday from 10 a.m in the morning. Be there. Don't miss the live discussion on the Alternative Uganda, Digitalk TV Facebook pages and the Alternative Uganda YouTube channel.